Hey, what's up guys? Chris here. In this series, I'm going to be showing you how to build a Django authentication application using TDD. So if you're not familiar with what TDD is, TDD is short for Test Driven Development and it's basically a practice where you add automated tests to your code as you write it. So there's a saying in the Python community that something that's untested is broken. So in this series, I'm going to show you how to, you can incorporate TDD in your workflow. Let's take a look at what we are going to be building. The user is going to be able to come to our application. They're going to be able to sign up. So they, we have two options of creating an account. So they were able to sign up using an email and Facebook. So let's see how signing with email will work. This is going to provide the email. So let me sign up. This guy here is me. We will implement error handling such that we can see these fresh messages when we have something that's not uh, correct. So now it's, we can add a full name. We can add a username and a password passwords need to be confirmed and they need to match for example if i put a password that doesn't match it's going to tell me passwords don't match and i can correct it so password password when i click register it basically creates a user's account and then sends them an email to which they can verify their account. Notice that the process of sending an email was like very fast and that's because we are taking advantage of the Python multi-threading capability to actually send out these emails on a thread that's not network bound. In regular applications, some people will choose to use Serary to send out these emails, but multi-threading is very quick to set up and you just keep in your Python workflow and everything works out Great. So let's check out. Let me check for the email. So in email client, I have a new email that tells me to confirm my registration. So when I click on the link, it activates my account and tells me that now I can log in. Yeah, I can supply my username, which is that. Hopefully, I didn't forget it. So the password also. When I supply a wrong password, it doesn't let me. But when I supply a correct one, I'm able to log in. So when I log in, Notice that it, it takes us to the profile page to which we can see our full name, our username, and then our email. So these other things are basically hard-coded, but I'm just going to show you how you can protect this profile page from a user that's not logged in. So we can log out, and we, if when we try to go back, notice that we can. We also have it redirects us to the login page and then gives us this next attribute, next parameter that tells the user where to go after here. Yeah. Pretty interesting. A user is also able to recover an account here. Yeah. A user can if a user forgets their password they can come and supply their email. So gmail.com and then notice that the emails they tell us that we've sent you an email and this is like really quick. So that way a user cannot be blocked by a long running process of sending out an email which usually will take up to five to ten seconds. So pretty interesting. So pretty interesting. Let's check our email to see if we have the new email. So notice that the email is here and it's really fast. I really like the way the emails come in first. So we can now click the link and then it takes us to a page in our app where we can add a new password. So I'm going to add a new password. Password two, three, password three. Then yeah, it changes it. And now we can log in with our new password. Now, my old password won't work, but I need to choose a new password. There. Okay, cool. So these links here are going to be are going to be one time, so they are going to only be used once. For example, if we try using this one, it's not going to let us. So we, I'm going to show you a technique that Django gives us to be able to create this one time reset one-time activation and reset tokens for the passwords and all that stuff. So looking at the final repo of the applic of our application, we are going to integrate a continuous integration server to actually run, a run our tests and then send a report to, to GitHub to tell us that our new changes are fine and we can go ahead and merge them into our GitHub project. So we also be able to use the service code coveralls to uh, get all our coverage and put it on a github repo 
So this way we can know which parts of our code are not tested and we can go ahead and go ahead and test them. So we, can, we are also going to add a service called code climate that will basically look at the quality of our code and tell us where we are writing code that can be written in a much simpler way. So yeah, so we will be able to deploy it to Heroku. For example, if I, if I could pull out the deployment. So as it logs, I'll show you the CI server. Basically, we'll set out a few build steps that the Travis CI server will, be, will run, and then it will, it will kind of show us progress of what comes from there. So Heroku, this is the live app, and I'll show you how to also deploy to Heroku. So let's go ahead and build our project. So I'm in my terminal here. We're going to use a tool called PPNV, and to get that, you're going to do pip tool PPNV. So after that, then you can run ppnv with a sub command shell to create your your virtual environment so that basically creates a p file so it has created it in my root so from there we can use ppnv to install django so ppnv install django so it's going to go ahead and install django now we can use django to create our django project so Django comes with a tool called Django Admin. So Django Admin, and it gives us a command to start a project called Start a Project. Then we give it a project name. So let's call it. Then we let's call it Django Auth App. Okay. So if we cd into Django Auth App and we do an ls, we have basically our Django app. But I want to move our environment file in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy out this path. So down here, I'm going to do MV, then I'm going to put a path, then dot. So if we do an ls again, we basically have the pip file here, and if we do pip env install, it should be able to have everything set up correctly. So yeah, it is basically going to install Django again. So now if we do code dot, it's going to open in VS Code and we have our environment file set up. If you are unable to do code dot, one of the things you can do to to set it up to set up a command, you need to add it to your path, and the easiest way to do it is by hitting command shift P and then typing in install code. Then you choose this option here. So when you click it, it's going to go ahead and set up your, your path to understand what code will mean. So from there, now notice that when we moved PPNV to the file, to the current app file, app directory, we have it in our, it's, it's kind of our environment. So it's now highlighted as our project. So now if we run Python, manage.py, run server, Oh, sorry, it should be all lowercase run server. Python manages py run server. It should be able to run our Django application. So if we click here, then we have Django installed and ready to go. So pretty interesting. I believe we are going to stop here. If you're new to the channel, please like, like and subscribe for when new videos are posted. I'll see you guys in the next video.